Firstly, good evening doctors and, and welcome to our Healthbridge Clinical Webinar and, and thank you very much for taking the time um, this evening to, to join us. Um, let me start by introducing the, the, the panelists. Uh, my name is Yvonne, I work at Healthbridge. I've been part of the Healthbridge team for the past 15 years. Um, I oversee our product and marketing teams and I've also had, uh, well, had the pleasure and it's also been a, a great privilege to work with the team that's um, developed um, Healthbridge Clinical. Thanks. I'm Jared. I'm the head of product for Clinical Products. Um, also roughly 15 years uh, via two stints. Um, I came back about a year ago to, to be part of this exciting project um, and I look forward to, to sharing what we've done with you guys. Uh, my name is Daniel Israel. Um, I don't work for Healthbridge. Um, I'm a GP. I'm similar to a lot of you guys. I'm in Johannesburg, but I've worked with Healthbridge. Um, I've used their products now for a number of years and yeah, I've had the privilege of just being able to contribute to this product um, in an advisory role, first informally and then just a little bit more in a structured way and yeah, very excited to be part of this. Oh, thanks. Thanks guys. Um, so yeah, both Jared and I are, are very excited this evening to, to show you our Healthbridge Clinical um, product, our um, electronic medical um, record, and really to, to share with you how it's already helping many doctors um, to benefit from digitizing the, um, the old school paper, um, paper patient files. Um, as, as Dr. Israel alluded to, we, we co-designed the product with a team of doctors. And really, we, we brought doctors on board um, to design the product in such a way that it didn't get in the way of the very valuable doctor-patient relationship and that it worked the way doctors wanted um, to work. And um, hopefully you'll see when Jared um, demos the product just how simple and quick and easy it actually is to use during um, patient um, consultation. And tonight is all about Healthbridge um, Clinical, but I did also want to share that um, our electronic medical record uh, works hand in hand with our um, PMA and billing system and our sales, our sales team would certainly for, for clients uh, or non-clients that are, have joined us this evening, our sales team would absolutely love the opportunity um, to show you our, our billing um, and PMA um, um, system. But before I hand over to, to Dr. Israel to share his experience in um, digitizing his practice, I just wanted to go through some logistics for this evening. So unfortunately, we can't, we can't hear or, or, or see you. We can only hear or see uh, the panelists. But we would still love to um, get your questions. There's a little Q&A icon at the bottom of, of the screen. Um, if you click on that, you can pop through a question. What I'll do is I'll keep track of the questions that come through, and then I'll um, interject or interrupt Jared um, whilst he's going through the demo at the appropriate time and hopefully we'll be able to address all, all the questions. If there's any question we haven't answered, um, we'll be able to give you guys feedback um, via, via email. We do have contact details for everyone um, that's joined us this, um, this evening. Um, I think that's, that's it for now from a logistics perspective. At the end of the demo, I'll also share our um, email address should you have any further questions which you want to um, pop through to us. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it from me for now. Um, Dr. Israel, do you want to take it from here? Sure. Um, so, well, welcome everybody. It's, it's, this isn't the first one of these that we're doing and it's, 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 a, it's, it's something I really enjoy doing. Bit of a strange uh, dynamic because you don't know who you're speaking to. Like it's not, you can see me, but I can't see you. Um, but, but but I really enjoy sharing a few words here because I'm quite passionate about this topic. Um, and and the reason for this is because I, really and honestly, I I feel quite privileged. Uh, Shane, you've lost my video, but don't worry. It's okay. Because we can hear you. On my screen, it'll come back shortly. Um, that's not, I feel I feel quite privileged to be part of um, this this the the, the 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 this whole solution, and I feel quite passionate about this topic that we're speaking about tonight because my my background is that I was part of a GP group um, in Johannesburg that was really the old style traditional GP group, 
and it had been going for many years and we used paper um, files. And it was really a good GP group. It still is clinically. Um, and, and that's how I learned how to be a GP. But w when I started on my own in 2011 or 12, somewhere there, I had the opportunity of either starting with files or starting with um, a paperless practice. And at that stage, even then, there were a few competitors on the market. Um, and it was it certainly wasn't as developed as it is today. But I thought that if I, this one time that I'm going to do it, that was probably the best time. And at that point, I decided to go paperless and I, in a bit of trepidation, but I went ahead and did it. And I, I must say that even with the challenges of doing that, I've never looked back. I would never, ever consider, given the chance again, you know, to having done it in any other way in terms of gone on paper. Now, that might seem obvious, but it's important for me and I to, to explain why. Um, I, I felt that at the beginning, like I mean, the, the first things that were really obvious to me going paperless were that I didn't have to have a special room for files. I didn't have to employ staff members whose jobs were primary to look for files, file things away, like the logistics of that thing. I didn't have loss of notes. Um, and, and really, like just informally, what, what happened with me is I started off with a system where I was working on a localized hard drive, and that system was on my computer or my tablet, whatever it was, and that's that's how it worked. And I had a little practice at my house, and I used to work out of another place, and I used to move between them and back it up to memory stick, and, that, and that's how it worked. But um, I, I fortunately actually met Jared, um, no, nothing to do with, with, with the system, and he mentioned to me that the that HealthBridge had developed it was called the Doctor app then, which was the very first version of the software, and it was just a very simple interface where one could, on the web, um, secure notes that could be accessed from any device anywhere. And I gave it a shot, and within a few days of putting my other notes on pause and moving on to that, I was really drawn to it because even though at that stage the functionality was quite limited, um, just the the, 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 the the accessibility and the dynamicness of it was just something that really grabbed me. Um, I was able to access my notes from my home computer, my work computer, my phone, even at that stage straight away. Um, from there onwards, I mean, it's, I've been using the system since, but it's, it's been a journey. It's been a journey of developing the, the, the software. Um, I, I'm not a software engineer and I have nothing to do with it, but I've been privileged to be able to give a bit of advice on the way in terms of what the things are that doctors need and, 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 and want in our practices. And, and I've got to commend Holbridge. And again, and I said, I'm not paid by them. I don't have a job work for them. They, they really have listened to doctors in terms of what we need. And I, I was well aware of the fact that like, my, my practice has a certain demographic and certain type of patients. And I, I mean, I used to say to the guys, look, you know, don't take my word for it. My other doctors might feel and I, I, otherwise. And the team of HealthBridge would go out to other doctors and do a little bit of research and find out, you know, do all doctors feel that way? And together with doctors, they've now gone over the last few years and developed a whole new HealthBridge clinical that has really got much more functionality. Um, Jared tonight will take you through that functionality and he'll show you now that in today's version of this software, there's so much more you can do. There's tracking of vitals, there's management of chronic conditions, there's applications, there's um, referral letters, um, the dynamicness on the screen, virtual, con there's so much that can be done. But what's really important to me, and this is in my practice, you might be different, is that I, I, I want my notes to be quite simple. So I still use the interface in quite a simple way, and I still look at it from the simplicity. Most of my consults are quick, and I don't always go into all these features, but the reality is they're there if I want them, and if I don't want them, I don't have to use them. And I'm, it's online and accessible and useful. The final thing that I want to say just in, in this whole spiel is that um, what really grabbed me and what made me change in terms of from the, the old software that I was using was that it was the integration with a switch. So for, for those doctors who use whichever switch you use, um, it's commonplace to go and write down the diagnoses or put them into the computer and at the end of the day sit with a list of diagnoses and procedure codes and then bill to the medical aid at the end of the day. 
And what, what really grabbed me with the system was that as soon as I clicked close, that consult was closed and the patient had already been billed. I didn't have to look again. I just had to go through the management software to see what hadn't been billed or to follow up with invoices. So the integration into the financial side became like it took out a whole level of responsibility or job for me. And that to me has made it that I can focus more on the clinical side. So, I mean, really, for me to do these webinars is actually just something that I'm grateful to HealthBridge that, that it's the least I can do to say to them like th an ongoing thank you for making me able to like, go to work tomorrow and have an easier day than I would have if I didn't have these tools. Thanks, Dr. Israel. Thanks for those very kind words. Cool. Should, uh, should we jump straight into, straight into yep. it, Yvonne? Cool. Yep. So, I think Dr. Israel used the perfect word there, which is journey. Um, we've learned a lot from, from the first version and there's, there's almost three key areas that we feel can set up a practice for success. So there's the, the close, um, you know, the seamless process between the admin and, and the clinical side of the practice. Um, there's the, the simple way of, of getting to a point where you can throw away your paper files and then there's the, the easy and slick consultation that doesn't break that, that patient connection and allows you to have a bill at the end. I, mean, I think often there's a lot of systems out there that have lots of bells and whistles, they, they're very comprehensive, but they, the, the first place that there's a kind of a hurdle with, with going on this journey is really that seamlessness with working with the admin person. So that's, that's where I'm going to start. Um, I have two little kids, they might barge in at some point, uh, so just bear with me. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Yvonne, are you able to see I'm good. I can see. Okay, great. Okay, so so just uh, first uh, a little bit of an orientation. Uh, it's it's a platform that allows both the admin person and the doctor to work seamlessly together. So so as Yvonne mentioned, there's there's the PMA side of it uh, that has kind of all the all the important things as well as the bells and whistles that you'd come to expect. There's digital calendars and reminders and, and patient SMSs. But what's really important is that it is seamless, you know, with the process and the practice for the doctor. So as an admin person, if you're looking at the admin interface, I can check in patients when they arrive at the practice, I can put them in the waiting room. Uh, so we can see there's Lawrence Jones, there's Francine, there's Sabrina. So I can do my work and at the same time, it reflects inside the clinical, the clinical EMR. So as a doctor, it's important to know who's waiting, uh, how long they've been waiting for, what does my day look like, and, and all of that is there. So here's the calendar, I can see the appointments coming up today, I can see there's a patient in progress, I can see there's patients that are checked in, and this is, it's just all seamless. I can see that there's a message from the, the admin person, um, this patient success suspects they have COVID, um, their colleague has it, there's this patient, also COVID, surprise, surprise, Lawrence Jones is there this is for a hypertension follow-up visit. So when, when the yellow, so one of the things we've learned is when the yellow file that, or the paper file that you typically have is no longer required, you don't want a patient just to be walking in and you're like, okay, um, who is this? You know, you don't have that, that record in front of you to check. So this, this is key to kind of a successful flow um, between the admin and clinical side. Um, if I go too fast, Yvonne, you know, I get carried away. Oh, Please just, I'll slow just, you oh. down. Great. Some of the other important bits of information, I can see that this patient visits in 39 minutes. This one was 21 minutes ago. This one was an hour ago. So I can get a sense of, of how the day is going. There's the type of visit. So I can see this one is a, a telehealth consult, which I'll show you. Um, it it's just helps me know and manage my day. So that's, that's the first very important theme in, kind of in the journey of going digital. Um, it, as, as much as an EMR is about clinical and clinical records, it has to work really well with the, the admin process in a practice. Cool, I'm gonna now open some of these files. Um, so we'll, we'll take Lawrence Jones as an example. I'll just simply click on it here or, or click on it here. I know he's here for his hypertension visit. As soon as I open it, it goes to the next part, which is that uh, the, the clinical record. And, and this is where I want to spend a little bit of time 
just kind of explaining what what we were trying to do here. We're not clinicians, so we worked with the likes of, of Dr. Israel and a, and a few other doctors with the goal of not needing that paper record, but at the same time, not having a cumbersome process where it takes you long to capture things. It needs to be quick and easy to get up and running that you can go on that journey um, to going completely digital and, and paperless. So in terms of, of the, the overview of the screen, let me zoom in a little bit. We've got the patient file and the consultation flow, which I'll get to. The main area is that is a patient overview. And then we've got this summary, which I'll, I'll speak to. So first, the patient overview. This is the, the key information that doctors have told us. This is what I want to know when a patient sits down or before they walk in. I can quickly click on Lawrence Jones. I can see, OK, he's asthmatic. He's on Ventolin, Palmacourt, he's an insomniac, he's on Stillnox, we discontinued Dormican, uh, he's got some surgical history, he's a, a smoker, his stress level is 7 out of 10, he's married to Florence. Um, and besides, you, you know, that's all the clinical information. There's, there's other key bits of information as well. Talking points, you know, he enjoys hiking. Um, he is a keen cyclist. And if I want to add something quickly to it, uh, loves to chat about diet or whatever it may be. So this just empowers the doctor to have all that information at hand um, and, and understand the patient before, before the consultation. I remember Dr. Israel during the design sessions pushing us very, very hard to make sure it was just the right and enough information, but that the doctor was up to them to add the little bits that were important. You, you pushed us hard. Yes, <laughs> very, very much so. Um, and all this, I mean, while this information is important and, you know, Dr. Israel says, yeah, you've got to have this, but it's got to be quick to enter, which I'll, I'll show you. It's, you don't want to be typing out long reams of information. So if I, I click on surgical and history, uh, surgical and hospitalization as an example, it's, it gives me a list of common surgeries. I can click on one grommets and immediately it's, there it is on, on the overview. It's, it's quick and easy and this, this content gets, you, you can generate it from just by clicking on any of these. So lifestyle and family history, and it also gets generated from the consultation process. So if you're in a consult with a patient, you diagnose them with something, say hypertension or whatever it might be, you can just add that to their record immediately. And this becomes richer and richer as, as would you had have, have on, a, on a yellow paper file, for example. And if, if we scroll down a little bit, um, there's a nice patient timeline. Again, this is just to help, help you understand, you know, what is the history of this patient? You can see that they were here on the 7th of March. They had acute upper respiratory infection. Maybe you want more information. You can dig slightly deeper and you can see the clinical notes that were generated on the system. And I'll, I'll show you how these were generated. They weren't all typed out. It was very quick and easy to enter. So I can see here, patient had a cough for a week, it was worse at night, um, I examined them, I can see their blood pressure, can see what I prescribed. All of this is, is dummy data in case you're wondering why some of these medicines were prescribed for this. Um, it's, again, it's about speed and ease. As a doctor, you can quickly scan through this, know everything about your patients and say, hey, Lawrence, how are you doing? Um, how's Florence, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Jared, if I can just um, maybe interrupt you, just um, talking to your point of going on the digital journey, do you want to maybe just share that there's that um, paper clip that's um, on the timeline and, and the purpose of, of that, that functionality in, in terms of the, the digital journey and moving from paper to digital files? Cool. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me, Yvonne. Um, here we got the, you'll see a little clip or, or a little image of the, the previous patient file. So as the admin person, what we find that works really well in a practice is when you move digital, as a patient arrives, the, the doctor still has the paper file. He can put a, a sticker on it. The admin person can scan it and then it's available next time for, for the doctor. So all I have to do as a doctor, I can see it's here, click on it and it opens the record and I can see the old notes. These are the little bits of information that doctors have given us. It's, it's great that it's digital. What if I want to see the paper file? Okay, we can scan it and it'll be at your fingertips. What if the patient phones and I want to add a quick note? Uh, phone to ask about uh, follow-up. 
appointment, whatever it might be, and you can add it to the record. You can take pictures, you can scan notes. It's, it's got everything, but it's, it's, it's designed in such a way that it's, it's quick and easy to use. You can filter to what you want to see. So I want to see the clinical metrics, my notes, really with the goal of getting rid of the paper. Down the right hand side, you'll, you'll see similar information and I'll, I'll explain why, why that's there. You know, why do we have conditions here and conditions here? This view remains there throughout the consultation process. So when you're consulting with a patient, you can see that they've got an allergy to aspirin or pollen, and they're asthmatic, insomniac, all the, the key information, again, that, that practitioners have told us, make sure that that's there just like I would have on, on paper. We can also see patient liable amount. So if that's important to the doctor, they'd want to know, um, you, can, you can hover over it and see it. We've got health ID integration. So if there's something you want to see in health ID, some previous information, again, all digital, all you do is click on that and it links straight to the patient inside health ID. Yvonne, am I forgetting anything on this page? I, no, think, that's, I think that's... That's that, that, that covers it. I'm going to go. Uh, uh, Jared, are you going to take um, take us through later that um, that right hand panel and how um, different information the the doctors can choose to overlay different information on top of that, like the path. You know? Yes, down down the yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay, so I, I'm going to do a consultation, but I'm actually going to kick off with a telehealth consult just to show how that flows. Um, and then I'll elaborate on, on, the, on the flow. So we've looked at the, the seamless integration with admin person. We've looked at making sure you have all the clinical information you need for, for a consultation. Now we're gonna actually go through the consultation. Um, so I will open Sabrina. Because it is uh, a telehealth consult, I have this telehealth button here. I can click on that and it launches a little window to connect to the patient. Now the patient will be here because the patient receives an SMS um, from the practice. So the patient will phone in, they'll say, I want to see the doctor. Um, I suspect I might have XYZ. I would like a video consult. The admin person would book it into the calendar and then the patient would get an SMS to them to, um, to join the consultation. And they'll be reminded of the time and they'll get a follow-up SMS just before the time. We don't want doctors having to wait for a patient. So we thought about this carefully that as a doctor, I can see here that it's red, means the patient is, is there and waiting for me. If it wasn't red, I'd know not to join. So I'll join this consultation. And maybe Jared, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. um, repeat, I think you mentioned, you've mentioned it, but that, that appointment reminder has a link that the patient clicks on that immediately takes them um, to, to this um, virtual um, cons uh, consultation room. So the patient didn't have to download anything, um, no, no application as well as, as the doctor. It's as simple as them clicking that link that's in the um, SMS and then they can enter the secure virtual um, consult room. Exactly, uh, which is important. So I know a lot of doctors use uh, WhatsApp, for instance, uh, which can work nicely, but now you've got, you've got two systems, you've got the WhatsApp and you've got uh, the clinical record. This is on screen. You can see the patient. They don't have to install anything. They don't see your number. They don't have to register like Zoom and it's all secure. Uh, so I can see Jaten. I can start a consultation. Hi Jaten. I can ask him what brings you in today. Um, Jaten works at Healthbridge. He'll tell me what, why he's in and he will go through the, the clinical flow. If I need to see it a bit bigger, I can expand it. If I need to make it smaller, I can collapse it. I can collapse it further. It's just a, an easy way to, to interact. And it's very important that it's, it's embedded in the consultation flow, which I'll, which I'll take you through. Cool, thank you, Jatin. I'm gonna say goodbye to you and, and kill you, or close you rather. Yeah, so, hopefully not kill. <laughs> not kill, yeah. Okay, so, so we've looked at the patient overview. I'm now gonna go into the consultation flow. As Dr. Israel mentioned, there's, there's different ways that this can be configured. I'm going to take you through the, the first way with many bells and whistles and then show you an even simpler setup depending on, on which approach you want to take. Every practice is different. 
you've we've chatted to to lots of GPs. We understand kind of the, the main ways of working, and we've tried to cater for that. We haven't thrown every single feature in the world into this. We want to make sure that we've done the essential things really well. Okay, so to how I, I started a consult, let me go back here. I have viewed the file. I can click start consult. And the first departure from, from normal EMRs that you would see is not using a body systems or, or body map, but rather a reason for the visit. So while those EMRs are very comprehensive, they often ask, there's just too much detail. You'll click on lungs because someone is coughing and you'll get a million tick boxes and, and things to fill out or, or click through. What we've done is say, okay, why is, why is the patient there? And depending on what you click here, it'll change the symptoms that you can capture, the examination, you'll choose a diagnosis, you'll add your medicine and complete the encounter. I will choose COVID because it's topical and we've, we've recently added it. And because I've chosen COVID, you'll see the symptoms are COVID related. So I can say, you know, and then this is where you can chat to the, the patient, say, you know, what are the, the symptoms you're experiencing? without having to, I mean, a lot of doctors aren't great typers. Most people aren't great typers. So you, you don't want to be stuck there typing out fever. It's really easy when the patient says, you know, I've been experiencing a fever. Um, I've got this cough. I'll say, well, do you have a sore throat? They'll say no, but I've, had, I've got a bit of shortness of breath and I'm nauseous. And it's very easy for a doctor just to click, click, click. It's got to be quick and easy and you can still have that, that patient interaction. And as I'm doing this, I've shown you, I've clicked on the consultation summary, it's building up that, that clinical record that'll then be there on, on the overview next time you open the patient. All of this is, is optional. If you can, you know, if they don't mention anything about headache or you, or you, it's not relevant, body pains, whatever it might be, they might say, you know, I have a loss of taste um, that started today. So I'll say started today, add a little note to it and it adds it to the summary. Very, very quick and easy to do. And, and Jared, somebody like Dr. Israel that prefers to type those simple and quick notes? Yes, so, so two, ways, two ways to do it. We can turn off the reason for visit if you prefer not to, to have the templates. And then it's predominantly um, text-based, so you'll have your symptom notes, you'll do your examination notes, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll dig into that a little bit deeper as we go. And you can mix them. Mix and match. There's no uh, forced way. Just, uh, in my, just to share that, in my practice, you, we find that some reasons for visit are very nice to use clicking, and we populate that. And some, we, when it's very, it's an unusual reason for visit, we might just be used to, I personally like typing, we just type out a few words, and that's it's, it's quite dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of doctors have told us for, for the telehealth, they like to use the, the COVID template because it's very easy just to click, click, click. Um, it's, it's just a simple template to use and, and they may not use uh, weight gain or weight loss, they prefer just to type as, as Dr. Israel said. Thanks. Um, we go to the examination section, there's, there's some basic vitals and metrics that are always there. Um, these are there regardless of the condition. Again, you can choose to populate them or not. If you have a nurse, the nurse can do this before the doctor. So there is a vital section in the file where the nurse can go in, they can capture the blood pressure, temperature, whatever it might be, write a note for the doctor. And when the, note, when the doctor is in the examination process or, or the consultation, they can then see that relevant information. They can say, oh, blood pressure is quite high, let me retake it, um, or everything looks normal. This is a collapsed version. You can expand it and it's got even more content should you want. Um, there's also Jackaled. We've, we've collapsed it by default. We try and make things as, as quick and easy. Only if you want this, show me the options. Jaundice, no, anemia, no, clubbing, yes, whatever it might be, and it populates. This is now the template for examination for COVID. I think I've, I've uh, you know, there's there's a few additional things I could touch on. For instance, some of these are, are conditional. So if I say equal entry, yes, nothing opens, expands underneath. But if I say no, you can dig a little bit deeper. It's decreased as a generalized, localized. I'll say localized. I can say where. And as I'm doing this, it populates it here. 
super simple and easy to use. And again, if you're a typer, you can turn this all off. You can choose to mix and match like Dr. Israel does and type the examination notes here. And I can, I can switch between this, the notes that I'm typing. I can also look at the record, if there's anything that might be clinically relevant that I have here at, at all points, just like having paper in front of you. Um, Jared, maybe before you move to diagnosis, I just want to mm -hmm. answer a few questions that have popped, um, popped sure. through. Um, the one is, and, I, and like I mentioned in the beginning, we've, we've got a group of um, existing HealthBridge clients and um, hopefully new clients to HealthBridge. And the one question is from an existing client, which is, is this a new version? I don't have access to these features from the calendar side on um, my HealthBridge app. Um, so, Doctor, I've taken down your, your details um, at this, like I mentioned up front, um, this, this product works hand in hand with our billing system and um, my MPS. You may well just have the my MPS um, calendar that you're viewing or like Dr. Israel mentioned, you may have the predecessor to Healthbridge Clinical, which was um, the doctor app. So either way, we'll, we'll get hold of you um, tomorrow um, and just um, share with you how, if you're interested, how we can get you started on, on HealthBridge Clinicals. So that was the one. Um, and then um, just and in, in related to um, capturing of notes, Jared, and maybe you can, you're best positioned to answer this one, is can one dictate notes um, speech to text? Great question. Um, not yet. So until it is until we've got it 100% seamless and, and, and working well, um, we've, we're still busy building it and, and working on it. You'll actually see on the screen, because I'm on a test version, there is a little dictate note there. Patient complains of sore throat. So, so we are busy working on this as, as we speak. We haven't released it to market yet, because we want to make sure that it is slick um, before we do. So, so watch this space for that, as well as Stylus. So Stylus support on a tablet. Maybe one, one more question before we move on. And um, this seems to be browser-based, um, so uh, operating system agnostic. Yes, uh, you can use Apple Mac. Dr. Israel, I think you use a Mac, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'm on normal, as long as you can run Chrome, it's, it works. Cool. But just to, on that dictation thing, I mean, I do, I do sometimes use the iOS um, standard text dictation to text that you can use on any. Oh, we lost him. Yeah, we lost. And on, 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 Jared will explain if you can dictate, and your your operating system will put it in text. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. So you can, if, if you're using iOS and Android, there is the, the native dictation that you can use. It doesn't have a great medical dictionary, so that's one of the things we're working on um, before, we, before we release it. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to diagnosis now. I'm going to spend, a little, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on, on diagnosis and medicine and then leave some, show one or two other things and leave time for, for more questions. Because Lawrence has an existing condition, there's a suggestion that for me to quickly select one or I can search for one. So for Lawrence, I'm going to say, you have bronchitis. I can spell bronchitis incorrectly and it still suggests it, which helps for us non-clinicians. Um, non I'll select bronchitis, the RC10 code. And then because I selected bronchitis, the medicines that, are, that come up underneath are specific to my practice. Um, and the way I prescribe and consult and um, dispense. So these, these suggestions, Amoxil, Menton, Zinat, this is based on the machine learning that happens in the background for, for your practice. So as you use the, the, the system, it learns from your behavior and your prescribing habits and only suggests things relevant for that condition. So we, we selected uh, bronchitis if I choose um, hypertension, so one of his existing um, conditions, you'll see that the medicines underneath that load are specific then to, to hypertension. So now I've got ACE inhibitors instead of antibiotics. 
um, as an example. So you can it'll, it'll learn as you use it. You can also select some. You can you can boost the learning so it learns quicker. So for if I choose asthma, and I, one of my medicines that that I don't use or that I use or not here, yeah, I can search for it. I can add it and I can tell the, I can show more, I can add it, I'll, I'll say venti syrup as, as an example, I'll add it to the prescription and I can tell the, the system underneath, I use this often, please prioritize it. So it, it learns as you use and you can also speed it up. And, we, and we've spent a lot of time on, on the medicine space. So you can filter if, if, it's, if you want a syrup, it'll show you your syrups that you use in your practice or sachet or inhaler. Um, you can see that this patient is registered um, for that in, um, Ventolin Acuhaler. There, there might be a different dose you want to use. So you can, you can drop it down and choose a, a different one. So we have that almost the family of, of Ventolins grouped together just so you don't have to always type and search. If you want to type and search, you can. And as I, as I mentioned, it caters for poor spelling as well. Other things that, so I, I'll, let's, let's choose a, a bronchitis as an example. Um, I'll choose bronchitis unspecified. If, if this was a chronic condition, obviously bronchitis, acute bronchitis isn't, I can pin this to the patient summary. So next time, like I have down here, asthma, insomnia, and hypertension, I can just pin the condition, add it to the record. So it's, it's about making sure that it's really, really, really easy to add a condition to the record, that you don't have to do it here, go back to a conditions page, that as you work, you can populate the, the, the clinical information. Other, yeah, go for it, sorry. Yvonne. I was gonna say, Jared, you, you know, I think what I was gonna ask, one of my favorites. Yes. <laughs> I know exactly. I can, you're going to ask about the I here, right? Not because my name starts with an I. <laughs> There's, I'll, I'll just click on and, and show. There's the, the SAMF information. So for Augmentin, you can see the indications, adult pediatric dosages, uh, contraindications, everything you'd expect um, from, from kind of that SAMF information here, uh, preparations. So really just a simple way for a doctor, if you want to look something up that you don't have to get the big book behind you, you can just click on the R and get the, the dosage information. Speaking about dosage, when you want to add this, there's, we can say whether we're prescribing or dispensing, uh, and then it's a very quick way to, to add dosage instructions, which will be on the script. So again, it's machine learning for augment, and we see these patterns, we see these patterns um, in, the, in the community of, of GPs, one tablet twice a day, I can say no repeats, five days, allow generics, and whatever it might be that's, that's appropriate. Um, so just a quick, as, I, as I'm clicking these things, it's generating the instructions, and I hit add to prescription. So while I'm, I'm spending time in these screens, this, this flow can be really quick. You can, you can type some notes or you can click some clinical information, choose your RC10 code, add a medicine and hit finish and, and it'll generate the, that, the claim and send it to the, either to the admin person where they can verify it or they can send it directly to the scheme. You can choose between dispensing and prescribing. I'll, I'll add another one quickly to the, to the script. Oh, actually I've, I've done only um, prescribing, let's do a dispensing one, dispense it, and I can see underneath here, this is what I'm prescribing, this is what I'm dispensing, I can print it, I can email it, um, there's letterheads, there's digital signatures, just uh, super comprehensive, you can split scripts, so if something is chronic or you want to have two scripts, you can split it into two, so now I have prescription one and two, we've really tried to think through all the all the little things that, that are important and make sure that they just one click to, to do them. Again, Venti's as an example, I'm gonna pin this to the patient's condition. I can choose what it is. So for Venti's we'll say asthma. And next time I open the file, I'll see that they're on Venti's for the asthma. 
Um, mm -hmm. Jared, sorry, uh, whilst we're on the, the medication, we had a question come through from one of the doctors um, as to whether we can do um, um, label printing at this stage. No, not at this stage. Um, right now, it's, it's, uh, we can print a script, but not label printing. But it, it is something, and again, uh, like we'll often mention that our products work um, hand in hand, my MPS and Health mm -hmm. Clinical. It is on our on our roadmap um, that we're looking at at launching um, soon. Um, so it is something that we we we're looking to make available. Yeah, along with stock management. So yeah. for for dispensing doctors, keep track of stock and print print the labels. I think that that covers uh, most of the medicine. There's also other, some other shortcuts and, and useful things. So there's a history of medicines the patient may have been on. So a quick way just to select something uh, without having to search for it. Uh, really, really easy. Again, they've got to be quick to do when the patient is there. Okay, how are we for time? I'm gonna try and wrap up the things and in, in allow for a little bit of conversation. There's, there's the plan section, so you can add a plan note, just like you can add a note to any section. We can do a sick note, so I'll, I can choose whether I want to include the RC10 code or not. I can say to and when from. I can email it, I can print it, I can preview it. Um, I can make amendments to it if, if I need to. There's a, a SMS to the patient. If we want the patient to come back, so please come for a follow-up visit in three weeks time. There I can see the, the information that will go to the patient in before three weeks time and I can also add to it, um, please come fasted or, or whatever it might be. And it'll have a due date for it. Um, a, re a really nice way, I mean, we, we've seen it for, for reminding patients for follow-ups. We've also seen a basic note saying, if not feeling better, please contact me. And we can choose to send it in two days time. That type of thing. So it's so really nice, just a, a quick way to, to ping the patient. There's a referral letter. Um, I'll, I'll quickly show you, we'll, we'll create a referral letter, has all the patient information on it. It's got their, their, their clinic information from the record, it's got their allergies, their conditions, notes. You may not want to send this to the specialist. It's just like using Microsoft Word. You can, you can remove things, you can add things, you can add notes at the bottom. Please call me after speaking to them, whatever it might be. Um, all these things can be emailed or, or printed. You can print it all in one go at the, at the end. So that's, that's the plan section. Mm -hmm. Then we go to the invoice. By default, it's, it's Owanano, it's a consultation. We know that because of the type of visit. Um, on our Sabrina example here, which was a, a telehealth consult, when you go to the invoice lines, you can see it's a 0130, depending on, on which way the, uh, the claims, what's going to be required, whether it's VCON, VCON S, VCON SC, whatever it might be, we can, we can always adjust that. Right now it's set to 0130 because of the consult type where Lawrence is, is, a, is a normal consultation, so it's your 0190. Again, the, the machine learning, the, the kind of the smarts, it, it knows because um, Lawrence is asthmatic, I sometimes do nebulization in my room. Um, I often do a glucose test. If I chose a diagnosis of insomnia, it wouldn't be asking, wouldn't be suggesting a procedure of nebulization. It does the same thing for consumables. And I think, Jared, if I can add this, this I remember coming up with many of the, the chats that we had with doctors is it's, they just, they're so busy that they then, you know, f forget to, to write down, um, you know, the consumable or, or maybe the procedure that was um, was done. And that's um, unfortunate, but you land up leaving money on the table and, you know, everything adds up at the end of the of the month where, you know, we chatted to other doctors and they were like, you know, it's, it's my call, it's my decision, I'm not going to bill for these um, specific consumables. I think what, what, our, what our system does is it, again, like you keep saying, it, it's, it empowers the doctor to make that decision, but at least you prompted. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, hundred percent. The uh, also consumables are quite clunky to search for in general. You search for gloves and you get a whole bunch of different gloves, and you don't want to have to do that every time. If you use gloves, uh, you search for it once. The next time it'll it'll suggest it here and just consumable, so you can you can click it, um, and also make sure you know. Then you're not having to worry that is it the right gloves, the wrong gloves, and then you have to search for dressing uh, needle. It'll because you've used it once, it'll prompt you again. To, to select it. What, uh, at the bottom, a review here, we can see what we're billing for. So that we are dispensing some amoxyl, there's a consultation. I can send it to the admin person. Um, again, this is, this is this, the, the first point I raise, it's gotta be seamless with, with the admin person. Please collect outstanding money. As, an example, it could be anything. But remember, we can see here the patient liable amount for this patient is 208 Rand. There's also a benefit check that happens in the background. So if you wanna see a breakdown of benefits, you can click on that, you can see the benefits. Um, it's, there's, a, there's a few other things I, I wanna to touch on down the right hand side here. There's a, a long consultation note format. So if you wanna do a really quick examination, uh, you may you can start a diagnosis. You can type in here, patient on, a, on a observation, sore throat, etc., etc., etc. Select diagnosis, add a medicine, and hit the finish button at the top here. So while I'm showing you everything, it's it's flexible of where you can start straight at the diagnosis. Type your clinical notes here, attach a file if you want, and hit the finish button at the top, and you're done. It can be, you know, two or three minutes. You can take more time, use it interactively with the patient. It really depends on your flow and what you're comfortable with. And maybe Jared, also at the end, you, you know, you said you want, you know, once you've added everything that the doctor can then choose to, to um, send that, that invoice or the claim through to the medical aid, they also have the option to um, rather send it to admin as you've got it um, selected there. Because again, we know many doctors would just prefer to have it, um, you know, before going through to the medical aid, to have it being reviewed by the um, administrative staff. So again, like, like you keep saying, it's, it's flexible. It, it allows the doctor to choose. Yeah, uh, um, you can also amend the price of the doctor if you want to give a discount. It'll then reflect on the claim that goes through. Often, once you get used to using the system, unless you need something in review, you, you kind of just skip that step you understand how it works and you hit finish. The other little things, um, the, the, this, you can have multiple files open, the patient phones you, you can, um, you so can Jared, search. We have, a, we have a question on how many um, patient files, sorry to interrupt, um, can you have open? How many files can you have open? Oh, uh, there's no, tabs. Tabs. there's no real, real limit. It just becomes, uh, you just start to scroll. Um, across, but you can have multiple ones open. So we've we've seen some doctors who who leave all of them open till the end of the day, review them, go one by one, finish, finish, finish. Otherwise, there's if if it's if the patient's going between a nurse and a doctor, you can leave the file open. If a patient phones in, you can search for that patient record. You can quickly see. Okay, they're asking a question. Let's say Brian phones in. He wants to know he's about his diabetes, you can quickly look at his notes, answer his question, go back to the consultation you were doing and continue. Same thing with pathology results. If they phone in, you can you can quickly click on the pathology icon here. If there's new results you haven't read for the day, they'll be listed here. Otherwise, you can go to your path result center, search for path results for a patient, um, and get a view of it from there. Also, you want to see how your day is going? You might be busy with a consultation. You say, oh, I've got six or seven patients that are already checked in in my waiting room. I, I need to speed up. Um, this one was two hours ago, so I really need to speed up to see Francine. Remind me why she's here. Oh, yes, she's here for COVID. So you're not boxed in. Oh, okay, I'm in this file. I can't see what's happening in my practice. You can easily switch between these things back and forth. If you need to phone the patient, their phone number's there. We, we've, we've tried to cater for like the jobs and, and the instances of, you know, the doctors have said, I need to be able to look up a path result while I'm busy with a patient, answer a phone, take a call, 
check a, a record. I need to quickly email a, a script so I can open Sabrina's file, email a script for Ventolin without having to do the whole consultation. We, we've really, really thought hard about making sure it, it's flexible. We, there's, yeah. I, sorry, I can get carried away, but mm -hmm. But we'd, we'd be here all night if we, <laughs> if we let you go. Yeah. I'm halfway through. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, just shout when you when you want to answer a few more questions. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's do it. Otherwise, I'm I'm worried we'll run out of time. Okay. Um, one from a confidentiality perspective um, or confidentiality concerns: Are the clinical notes accessible to admin staff, or are there um, levels of of access? Great. This. So, it's it's really up to the practice. But by the nature of how we've designed it, we've, we've, even though it's integrated and has all this, the same information under the hood, it's two separate systems. So here we have the, the PMA um, admin side where you can look at invoices, collect money, but you don't see the clinical information here. You only see it in Healthbridge Clinical. If you want to give another person in the practice access to this, uh, a nurse would be a good example. You can then enable it for a nurse who will have access to clinical. But otherwise, the, the clinical information isn't shared across practices. It isn't shared with the admin side of the practice. It's, it's consolidated um, into the Healthbridge Clinical with the doctor's choice of who you can give access to it. Cool. Um, can the system sync with uh, point of care diagnostic tests? It came up last week. Also. Yeah. Not not yet. I think it's definitely a, a space that we have to uh, to get into more. So you know, from from blood pressure machines to it's, it's the Internet of Things, anything in a practice that that is is digital, from a scale to blood pressure to even um, on the spot pathology. The idea is to to bring that in. We haven't done it yet, though. the The next big things that we are looking at is is voice, um, and then. Uh, a stylus note taking um, and, and a few other bells and whistles, but it is it is on the list. Cool. And then rela related to notes, are the notes time stamped? Um, when do they become non editable for medical legal compliance? Awesome. Um, when you complete the consult, so everything is time stamped. Nothing is ever deleted in a in a system. So you can see the time here. There is no way to delete or amend notes. You can add another note as a correction. So you can type a note in here, correction, previous consultation, incorrect uh, patient or, or whatever it might be. There's no, you, there's no way to amend those notes for, for medical legal kind of compliance, okay. compliance reasons, yeah. Cool, and then maybe one more question that's come through. We're getting, we're getting a few, which is, which is great. We, we're more than happy to answer them. Um, is it possible to sign a prescription online um, before emailing them? There is a, a, a digital signature um, that we have enabled in the system. So right now you can choose to have it or, or not by default on the, on the prescriptions. Obviously for Schedule 6, we, we do things like um, write out the whole word. Instead of one, it'll be O-N-E and that you know, you still have to kind of sign, sign by hand, obviously, um, and, and write on it. But yes, there is, there is a digital signature. Great. And then um, how are ECGs, lung function, um, tests, et cetera, captured and accessed? Okay. So, so certain, certain tests are under the vital section. Um, so just to, to give you a, a sense of it, uh, cholesterol, heart function, glucose, diabetes, you can add a free form note if there is something that we don't cater for now. Um, ECG would be, you can scan the, the results of the ECG and it'll be as a, as a file on the, uh, on the record here and you can filter to it. Um, otherwise, you can add it as a, as a note. There's, if you're in a consultation that some of these things are pick, applicable for, so lung function, um, if I go into reason for visit, if I'm selecting um, asthma or chest pain, it'll have those type of fields. 
and the, these templates we, we constantly adding to and, and refining the, the, the philosophy is to make sure it caters for 80% of the information at least that you'd need. You don't want to have a huge template when you click on um, general checkup that caters for every single thing. Uh, make sure the relevant things are there and, and you can capture it. I hope I answered that, that question. Great, thanks Jared. I'm sure I'm sure you did. Um, I think we've I think the questions have, have stopped coming through for now. Oh, there's another there's another one. I know we are getting to the, the, the top of the hour, but um, I can answer it quickly. Allow, yeah. Does the system allow locum doctors to work on the system with the um, council registration information, etc.? Yes, yes, definitely. So on the on the admin side you can um, create different providers that can have um, all their own information uh, regarding registration information, their own treating practice numbers, the link to the billing practice, and you can give them access to, and then this syncs with Healthbridge Clinical, and you can give them access to login um, and view patient records. Um, so we have obviously a lot of practices that use, that use locum, so we made sure we cater for that. Cool. Thanks, Jared. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think we've answered um, most with, of the questions somewhere. With one minute to spare. Um, yeah, uh, 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 just a few things from, from our side. Uh, if I'm assuming you, you've covered everything you wanted to get through. Yeah. Um, and Dr. Israel, maybe if there's anything you want to you wanna add before we let everyone go and enjoy the, what's rest of the, the rest of the evening. I just think that the, the thing that for me has been great and continues to be great is just the, the, the fact that it keeps changing. So, you know, you, people are asking things, can we do this, can we do that? And most of the things I can see now you can do on HealthBridge, but, you know, even the things that you can't, um, I, I don't know if Jared said, like every two weeks there's a, a new version that gets released. And, 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 and that's the point is that, the team's open to suggestions. So so whenever we come up with something and say we'd now like to be able to add a new graph that shows saturations because of COVID or whatever for patients monitored at home or whatever it is, they will then put that on. And that, that's what's really great. Is that, and that's not just for the developing doctors. Like they're, they're open to all suggestions. So um, that, that really makes you as a user part of the team no matter how distant or, or near you are to the development. Just while, I, while I'm, I'm actually speaking, um, so, so I'm really happy for anyone to contact me. I mean, it's a process going digital. And if you have any questions that you think about afterwards and you want to ask, and even if it's something that you don't want to ask, I'll directly and I'll be quite candid and honest about what is good, hard, easy, bad. Um, you're more than welcome. Um, my email address and contact details are available from um these are the health bridge team with absolute pleasure great thank thanks dr um, israel and and just on that um you would have seen right up front um uh, liza our, our, our digital brand manager had created a little billboard that showed if you have any questions and you'd like when you want to pop those through to us or if you want to ask us for dr israel's um details um you can send us an email on webinar at healthbridge.co.za um also like i mentioned um, this evening, we've got both um, existing HealthBridge clients um, as well as um, non-clients. And, and like I said also, uh, hopefully um, we'll, we'll soon be joining our, our HealthBridge um, family. Um, so at the moment, and our, really our sales manager just asked me to share this, is the, the team has been um, running with a special, to get, um, a special offer to get new doctors to sign up onto HealthBridge. And that is that if you, if you sign up... Um, now um, you'd, you'd be able to use not only the, the billing system but as well as Healthbridge Clinical um, for free until the end until the end of until the end of June. Um, as well as we're wavering away any any costs from an onboarding perspective, which amounts to about um, five thousand um, five thousand rand. So should you wish to join us, it's something we would um, um, you wouldn't have to incur as 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 a cost. Um, and again, like I also mentioned in the beginning, um, for those doctors that are, are, um, are new to, to HealthBridge, um, tonight was about HealthBridge Clinical. We'd love the opportunity um, to show you um, MindPS. 
straight after this uh, webinar um, you'll be getting a, a message with a quick survey um, that we've um, asking doctors to complete and really that's just from the experience we've had with our previous webinars where we've had a number of doctors then um, the next day ask us look I, I want to get someone out to show to show me um, my MPS so just to help manage um, the, the appointments that we, we set up with doctors um, if you can complete that quick survey that will go out this evening um, by SMS or Liza is also going to be popping an email through to you um, tomorrow, we'd, we'd really appreciate it. And we'd also appreciate it that you just complete um, the survey and let us know what you thought of the, of the webinar so that um, we can improve it for um, future webinars that, that we host. And I think that's, that's it from, from us. Again, big, big thank you. Thank you to our, our panelists. It was, it's always great to have um, Dr. Dr. Israel, a doctor like, like you guys, which we know, I'm sure, are very, very busy. A and Jared, of course, always nice to have you and Liza. Um, but yeah, and, and especially to, to everyone that joined us this evening, a, a big thanks. Great. Thanks, Yvonne. Thanks, Doctor. Hi, guys. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Good evening. Bye. Bye.